fixtures, all that kind of stuff. Uh, same with the sewer equipment. Electricity is a little bit lower. So something we've been experimenting with, Clint and I have been monitoring the wells. What we do is we turn off the wells in the winter. Turn off the big well. We run off the small well. Uh, we run on, turn off the intermediate, the medium-sized well, we turn it off. We run on only the big well. The big well and the small well. That way we only have two wells coming on and off. They run longer, but they're more efficient. So we don't have to start up. And, and plus it lets that well rest all winter long. So we managed to save a couple thousand dollars off the, uh, off the electricity. You can see we're at $10,000 on the water before it was 18,000. Some of that's due to the water usage. Um, but also letting that well rest. It's been a strong all summer so far. Water's been consistent. I track the water every month. You know, about every couple of weeks, I track the water and measure it. It's been going good. Um, payroll, we discussed in executive sessions. That's a number. Is there anything where you want to? Okay. You did your best. All right. Um, CapEx, we have one CapEx number. That was in the memo I gave you. Ed pointed this out to me in our meetings before. Um, we had approved a, a we, we had set aside one of our improvements was going to be the emergency interconnect with Lua. I if you remember that one, Gary. Um, you know, because of our, when you hit 250 connections, you have to have emergency backup power. We have to have big generators here. To be able to <coughs> when COSER goes off like it does at my house every single day. Start to count today. So, state law, we have to have backup generators. Or, you can hook up into a different water system. Which you, we can hook up into this well right here. We'll allow them to do that. It allows to get we hook into the water and the uh, system there, and that provides us with water we need it, and we don't have to have a backup generator. We avoid having big generators, diesel generators, sitting there doing nothing. Um, so the cost of that is about seventy thousand. We had talked about it last year. Um, things got ahead of us because of the tanks and the other stuff were higher priority, and um, so we obviously had to get the other tanks in here. And, Get that stuff squared away. So it's back again. In a perfect world, what we would do, in my view, is we tie into that well. We go in there and lease the well. We lease it for a fixed payment, and then we just operate the well. And we use it as just a fourth city well. We have another well then that can supply water to make the And we run it during peak demand, and we supply that well. I don't know if they'll let us lease it, but they will certainly let us connect. So the, the seventy thousand, the entire capex utility fund, that one, that one. Yeah. Is that a one-time fee, Mark? Uh, yes, it, it should be. Unless it, it, I, I really like them to lease it to us, just like leasing a car. I'd like to say, look, we'll pay you. You know, here's two thousand dollars a year. We'll pay for the electricity, the chlorine, the operator. We'll just run it. And then that'll be another Lakewood Village well, and we just get to use it for the water. Because it's surplus equipment, it has no purpose. They're not using it for anything, it's, it's not being used. It doesn't do anything. That, so. That's 70,000, just the infrastructure to get the pipe to the ground and make the connection. Okay. What yeah. Mark's talking about, if we get into a lease, that's a separate contract. Mm -hmm. that a new line item. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the nice thing also is that if we run this interconnect up there, it now waters the school board property. We're running along the school board property. So now that property has water service already on it. So part of the impact fees is later we could potentially recapture some of that because that's a water line servicing the school board property. Is that property in the No. No. Okay. Um, well, what we can do, Coaster has a power line running through there. So mm -hmm. we're working with them to get the easement and share their easement. Right? Okay. And the reason why, I mean, we, we, pre we finished the fire hydrant project for this year. We've got all the fire hydrants in. Um, obviously, we have the tanks and all that kind of stuff. That should all be finished. The new tank, uh, uh, Sam is working on the bottom now. We've already started construction of our new ground storage tank, the steel tank going next door. Um, he told me some crazy number. The thing's got like 3,800 volts to bolt this thing together. So, Ed. 
Can we pay for him to count all those? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. When they say a bolted steel tank, they mean bolted because it is. Um, so the reason why the CapEx is just a single item is that because of all this infrastructure potentially related, I wanted to keep the CapEx on the utility fund light. We might, you know, we're going to have to pay this engineer, right? So we want to have flexibility in the utility fund because it's got to pay for the infrastructure, the engineer, some of these impact fee things up front. So, um, the first column is 2014, 2015. Yeah. So, we went from a budget of 203 in two years to 319. Is that right? I just want to become Yeah, but over here, we spent $250,000 in CapEx. So where's that line now? This is CapEx here. That's where we did the sewer plant. Yeah, the sewer good. plant, the water plant. We're just saying, where's the 250 in there? We spent it in there. Again, these, are, these aren't audited numbers. So uh, this is the 69 we spent so far this year. Yeah, I mean, the whole budget is 200,000. So if we spent 250,000 on sewer, it'd be. No, we spent 250,000 on sewer. We spent 250,000 on CapEx. The sewer plant, I can break down all the numbers. No, no, I'm just saying. But I don't see 250,000. The whole budget is 203. Right. Where's the 250,000 on there? In the last two years, that's what we spent. I, I can pull it up, but I know yeah. we're not going to get there. 43 plus 69 is not going to get you put there. I know. Yeah. That's why this number here isn't on. So it's going to go up by $200,000. I have to check the numbers. But between 2004, it might have been 2004 and 2005. I don't, I don't recall. I don't, there's another chart I have. It's on the first page at the bottom where 2014 utility capex was 250,631. 2014. So uh, this year here, this 51,000, that was a detailed list that we came up with that dealt with the fire hydrants and the services buildings. We did the fire hydrants, we did the services building, we didn't add on to the building. Instead, this is part of our water, you know, water tanks, the pressure tanks, the pressure pumps, etc. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Like, like Mark said, on the water side and the sewer side, we invest a lot of CapEx. We have a lot of pumps, we now have capacity for 400 houses. We have a lot of stuff built in. That's what we've been doing all these years. We've been plowing money back into the utility side. It's actually a good thing to see that money. It's reinvested. It's not the fund that is growing. It's being reinvested. It's, it's all being plowed in there. I mean, we if you look at our bank account on the utility side, you know, it's nice. We've got about $170,000 in reserve. It's built it up to about $300,000, and then we we did a lot of the sewer and water. Okay, so um, that's the idea. Any questions about the expense items on the? Which I, I was just going to say, I mean, part of the strategy of the town has been to build those funds up and then actually burn them out. So we avoid, the, avoid having to borrow money to go redo the sewer plant. I think this year is a perfect example. We had the cash set aside. We had the cash. So when Lincoln Park went <coughs> under, we had the money right there. Call Mustang on the phone, right? Is it Mustang or Tara? Mustang. Call Mustang right now, make them an offer. Okay, Sam, I don't care what it costs. Get the tanks down. What's going to cost? 8000 a loop, whatever, done. Get the tanks. So we got $5,600 <coughs> to get all this equipment, ground storage tanks, pressure tanks, for $0.05 cents on the dollar. It was great. That's why we're here. we got to have the money to be able to move quick. And we do. We have the money set aside in reserve funds. We can pull the trigger quick. We don't have to go to a bank and try to borrow money or set any financing up. We can move now. That's why we've always operated the utility fund. So that, that makes sense to me. But how much are we contributing this year to yeah, the fund? I mean, what, what Clint just said makes perfect sense. It funds for itself. We're putting money away for rainy days. Um, on a three hundred ninety thousand dollars budget, how much are we putting away? 
Yeah, I
when will total we don't know this. we don't know when development's going to start i know for a fact today as we sit here our wells are running almost 20 hours a day to keep up i'm here every day practically looking at those wells i'm worried Every day, I'm looking at flow rates and watching the wells. So we need to have something just in case. Or it's OK. We can do nothing like you suppose. Do nothing. Let's just sit here and do nothing. And when that well fails, we'll go to code red. We'll be watering one time a week. And we'll just sit back and say, you know, that's, Can I share with everybody that this meeting is almost approaching four hours? And we have four other items on the agenda. Can we move on to the road maintenance fund? Okay. All right. All right, road maintenance fund. Same thing as we had before. So this was an issue about trying to get some revenues into this fund. Uh, I've updated the numbers through the end of the month. Basically, nothing has changed. I mean, we've got about $32,000 in the bank now. In this dedicated fund, if we make these adjustments, uh, if we take the half cent, which was the EDC, and we just chunk it in here, we dedicate that half cent sales tax, which is down in the city. Uh, the MED makes its contribution, then we're going to generate another thirty-seven. We'll have seventy-three thousand dollars at the end of the year. That's what you'll have in the road. Now, can you leverage that money? Yes. Can you go and borrow money and use this? pay for a loan. So could you, let's say, borrow $250,000 and say, let's take out a five-year loan, pay this off over five years, and do a $250,000 repair? The answer is yes, you can do that. Okay? That's possible. So the target is, <coughs> the target you laid out was 3.6 million, and we're at 72,000 dollars. It's a big amount of cash. 3.6 million for, that's your quote for the concrete roads. Yeah, so to get us to, Assuming, you remember, we still have the open issue of the MDD money that may or may not, right? But let's just say we're at $72,000. $72,000 is 3.6 million. Can you repeat? For 79 years to be able to get road tests. No, you can't. That's right. Right, so, so there's never the plan. I'm with you. It was never the plan. I think I think that's pretty obvious. So here's the thing. This is so a road maintenance fund. This is maintenance fund. It's not a capex fund. fund. It's, it's, a cap -X fund. Cap -X it's a road maintenance fund. It was set aside yeah. to... So there's no capex to pay the roads. That's right. The only money you have is this fund. Yep. You've got a $3.6 million bill hanging over your head, and we're talking about putting $36,000 in here. That's my point, but the totals don't match. And I'm, I'm just trying to make sure we're real clear is that I agree that the amount of effort you put into this in, in the line items, but in the end, when it's all said and done, you put in $37,000 and $3.6 million. It's 3.6 percent But you keep mixing the categories. Not mixing the categories. It's we, we have, if we go to future concrete roads, in the future, it's going to be millions of dollars. We cannot do that right now when we only have seventy-nine or eighty or $100,000 to run the city. It can't happen. But your roads it will not happen. Your roads have failed that. This is a road maintenance fund. This is to do repairs. This is to see, can we set up a different fund to do repairs? Stop talking about the 3.6 million, about the concrete roads that build out. This is to fix the roads right now to band-aid the current roads. Can we band-aid the current roads? That's what this is for. When we get future development, when our tax base increases, and when the next mayor wants to raise the tax rate to 85 cents, then you'll get the 3.6 million. So that's when that's going to happen. And again, I know we know this, but let me just repeat it. We're counting on future development to pay for existing infrastructure. We should be living within our means. But you just said a few minutes ago you didn't want to, you didn't want anybody to have to pay for anything in the future. What I'm saying is that you're you're, you're saying it's 3.6 million dollar nut out here, and we're not we're going to put one percent away a year. This is but this, this is, is maintenance. Is that this, is not rebuilding the road. This is actually this same is thing to over fix over. potholes. I, I do have a question. This I see, is I see, zero, I see zero expenses. What are, what are we planning to do with the 73? That's what we're going to discuss right now. Okay. Okay. So, so the, the yeah, first step was to get it built up, not borrow money to go fix a problem. So, so now we have a chunk of, chunk of money that we can actually 
So the, the options that the city council has is that my job is to fund a bucket. If there's no money, then there's no questions. You know what I mean? There's nothing to debate. Now, what I'm trying to point out is we're going to get $37,000 in this thing here, unless something changes. $37,000. Now, with the 73 there, you can go out and borrow money. You can issue warrants. You can do that. You might be able to get, I can work the math out for you. I talked to Point Bank with it. Let's just, I'm going to throw a number out. Let's say you got $200,000. You're going to make repairs worth $200,000. And this fund will pay the number. No other tax you have to change. Nothing comes out of the city fund. Not one penny is diverted from the parks. And we can spend $200,000 on patching, flipping, grinding, sanding, paving, everything but concrete. Okay? Maintenance, not very concrete. Maintenance. Or plan B is you guys could decide we're going to chunk most of this in, we're going to borrow the money, we're going to melody lane and concrete. Because land plan's going to touch it. And it'll be a dirt cheap, never be cheaper to do it. It's a target of opportunity. And we, the council, think the target of opportunity is here, it's worth busting a hump to get melody lane done and picking off that road and rolling out. It's a choice you guys make. A choice. Right now, we're here about putting money into a bucket. So, is there any other money you want to put in this bucket? Yes. You know, yes. Okay. You're putting 1% against the other way. You're, 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 you're heading towards a disaster here. No, we're not, because you keep mixing them up. That's like looking at the repair bill for the water and saying the repair bill for the water isn't going to cover the new sewer plant. It's a cap. X. You told us you can't fix the roads. We gotta be. Right? It's cap X. This is not cap X. This is a maintenance. But there is no cap X. This is that's right. This is what we got. You're right. So this you're is zero. There is no cap X. This is where we've got. Let's say the first thing is here's the road. Yep. We agreed that the road's gonna fail. Okay. So you so a repair is very expensive. It's not a patch. It's digging the whole thing up. Gary's gonna get some information on that, right? Gary's talked to a company and he's gonna get some bids. Okay. Does anybody want to change any of these numbers? No. You want to change the number? Where's the CapEx to fix the roads? CapEx is not fixing the roads. This is maintenance. This is repair. We're not CapEx. Where's the CapEx to pay for this? This is maintenance. If you have any questions, you'd like to change any number on maintenance fund. The 8500 BMD is not accurate. Okay, I think it is accurate. And according to the board, is accurate. Before you vote on that, I've asked the lawyer. In two okay. weeks, he can't give me an answer. You sent that. the wrong question to TML. You sent the wrong question. Okay, I can show you the AG's opinion which says it's perfectly fine. You know, I, I thought, thought we were trying to save attorney fees. I know, but he's going Guys, in. If you're doing something that's illegal, you better cover your butt. And it's not advise, illegal, Dan. If advise, you don't understand it, just say you don't understand it. Just ask me. And I'll explain it. I'll show you. Are we you to the, the point where we can make a motion to approve this budget? Yes. I make a motion that we approve the budget as presented, uh, including the two changes that I've noted and we talked about, I think everyone was fine with, regarding um, uh, engineer uh, uh, the engineer going from 36 Yeah, and, and the engineer going to uh, 40. All right, I have a motion to approve the budget. Second. I have a second, motion and a second, all those in favor? Opposed? Hey. Okay. All right, moving on. All right, uh, discussion of 1617 ad valorem tax rate. Um, so this is our TMT statement. Uh, it came in late, so you don't have it in the packet. Uh, yeah. TMT is our truth in taxation, basically. Um, in a nutshell, our tax rate, our, uh, our effective tax rate is 24.2, uh, and our rollback rate is 46 cents. Okay. So when it comes to taxes, we calculate two numbers. One number is what's the tax rate that you charge your current people to generate the exact same revenue, 0% growth. That's called your effective tax rate. For us, it's 24.2 cents. Instead of 25, it's 24.2 on the 25 cents. Okay. Debt is seven. Right? So 
you're also then allowed to get 8% more. That's called the rollback rate. You can get 8% more tax money from your residents each year, and there's nothing they can do. Right. It gets above 8%, they can have a petition, and there's, they can jump through hoops, and it almost never happens. I've never heard of it happening. Because most times in town, then, if it's really, if people are up in arms, they'll just change it. They'll set it back to 8%, <coughs> there's nothing you can do. So that 8% is called the rollback rate, and for us, because of the debt, you can always cover your debt in the state of Texas. We can always charge you the debt. Our debt is 19 cents. Our debt is 19.9 cents. 19.9. We raised your taxes five cents. It's 19.9 is what it is this year. That's why we don't have the money to go out and paint the paint. We're, we're trying to run on a lean ship. Okay? So the rollback rate is 46 cents. That's what we can set the tax rate. We can go from 30 to 46. There's nothing anybody can do. That gives us 8% more money to operate the city. Okay? Those are the two rates. So typically, as you'd expect, what every city does, we go between them. You don't go below the effective rate because cities aren't shrinking. And you don't go above the rollback rate because you don't need that kind of money. So you end up between the two. My proposition, what's built into the budget, is we stay exactly where we are. We keep the debt at five, five cents, even the, and we eat the other 15 cents out of the city. So 25 cents stays 25 for operations. We take 15 cents of that to pay the debt. We run the city out of 10 cents. Okay. That's the tax rates. Okay. I can go through all these numbers offline with you if you want to know all the calculations. But, okay. So, um, that's a discussion. Next month, we will have to adopt the tax rate. That requires a super majority. You guys have to be here to raise up. Anybody misses, then we have a problem. Okay. All right, so that's the truth in taxation uh, stuff. Uh, number four, consideration of an ordinance regarding the nuisance ordinance. problems we've had, we've had a problem in the past where was, I hate this thing. Uh, here's the issue. The issue that we have is that people are putting their bulk trash out like a month early. People are just hauling refrigerators and trash coming out and piling up the street, even though it's not bulk trash for another six weeks. So the problem is until now, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Because there's no ordinance that says, you know, when you can put your trash out. So it was a catch-22 because people were junking up the street. That's our right of way. That's the city property. Okay. So we needed to make an adjustment so we can tell people stop doing that. So if you cut down your trees in in July 15th, you're not going to wait until September before they come and pick it up. Enough's enough. The problem we're having with is over here at some of the red houses. They're trashing the place with bulk trash. They're trashing it by putting their stuff out. Way early. Refrigerators, furniture. They're just throwing it out on the curb and letting it sit for a while. So I asked Linda if she would work on drafting some language. And the idea would be one, is it in here, red line, Linda? Yeah, that's red line. Just so we know. Well, there's the definitions. I defined bulk trash. And then down in the deed of the maintaining property. So what we tried to do was we figured if you just said you got to put it out the weekend before bulk trash, that's a little restrictive. You don't want to be out there, you know, busting their rear ends trying to trim or whatever that weekend before, and that might not be convenient. Let's back it up. It's the weekend before the weekend before bulk trash. You get two weekends to drag it out to the curb, cut it down, hack it up, do whatever you're going to do. If we're not any earlier than that, that's a nuisance problem. You're in our right of way. You either got to pay Allied to come get it. We're going to give you the option to pay Allied for a special run. You pay. Or haul it back in. So I think that's reasonable. Two weekends is reasonable. Could okay. you define that possibly, Mark? Maybe to say like a 15 days. Because if a holiday falls in there, then the bulk trash gets adjusted. You know what I mean? 
by shifted by a day. We never had a two minute hire. You would actually get more. Time. You get extra time. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, the idea is just that you know, it's I look, I hate ordinances that tell you putting your trash in around. That's so H O A ish. I hate it. And most people, you don't have to do it, but we have a handful of people that unfortunately, it's, it, and they're red houses. There's nothing we can do. <coughs> just we don't care. And so, you know, unfortunately, it's not for the 99 percenters, it's for the 1 percent. So, so I, I like telling people, hey, you guys, you can, you can put your bulk trash out if you want to pay for an initial run. I think we communicated a little bit more, let people know there's an option, and instead of 10 days, that's, that's probably go that. The only question I have is, how long have we had ordinances, because it's the first time I recognize it, that make it a misdemeanor to break an ordinance? It doesn't mean we've had one. Oh, it is. That's one of them. That's one of the use powers and the use of ordinances. Um, so, we're all misdemeanors. It's funny about that. So, every, when we break an ordinance for trash, we can get a, and then again, I'm not questioning the, the change, but I like it. But I'm just curious, how long have we been that we can charge up to $2,000 a day? What's the misdemeanor yeah. offense for talk? I've started in 1990, and it's been that way as long as I know. That strikes me as uh, the criminal record. No, it's not. It's a it's scheme. Yeah, it's, I know. Well, you know, it's not as a record. Right? You look, you, 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 no, it's not. It's not recorded. It's not recorded. It's a municipal offense. It's, it stays in our court. It's if it's a life, health, safety issue, state law allows for a maximum. You, you never get to 2,000. Yeah, but who's our court? So we, are, we have a judge, we have a prosecutor. Oh, who's that? Judge Greg Berkman is our judge, our presiding judge. And we have a prosecutor out of the Navy's office. So all the awareness is like this. Because I think it, 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 it kind of goes, well, I mean, anything that's a health safety issue, the law says max is 2,000. For most of them, if it's not life health safety, it's 500. It's the max. The so judge so never goes with the max. So we have, we have window cards. I like the image. I think the penalties are not. And again, we have never, I've been here nine years. I have never met the judge. We've never had court in nine years. Because we don't, we, that's the goal. Never, ever have court. You're our neighbors. If we have to, it's, it's nuts that we would ever have to bring in front of a judge. That's crazy. Um, but either way, that's been there for a long time. The penalty. Uh, that's the way it gets. Anything that's life health safety, yeah, has a has a penalty. Do you have a question? Yeah. Has the town ever considered doing more than once every like a once every two months for bulky waste? Have they ever considered doing like once a month for bulky waste? But the problem we have is that the so we, we have a contract with Ally. Mm -hmm. They'll do whatever we want. Yeah. The problem is like Oak Point does it, it's either every month. But the problem is, it's about one quarter of what we're allowed to put out. Okay. It's very small. And with us, traditionally, we've had the bulk be every other month. And then when they come, they don't take out tape measures. Yeah. Our tradition is, if it's there, pick it up. Okay. And they've been really good about not looking for excuses to not pick something up. They just pick it up because we're small. It's not worth half 